Okay, we're live. So hi, I'm Phil, and today I have with me two new faces. So let's see, we have Julia Hello. and Johnny. Hello. So Julia and Johnny are our new podiatrists. We've had to search the world to find podiatrists <laughs> of this caliber. Julia, where are you from? I'm from New Zealand. New Zealand and Johnny. I'm from the UK. UK. So uh, Julia and Johnny are with us. Most of their time is spent in our main Mackay Clinic, but also they do some of our outreach trips out west and north. So you'll see their friendly faces. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a live, obviously we're going out. We haven't done many of these lives and just be patient with us because we're a bit um, terrified. <laughs> but we're gonna do it on the topic of heel pain. So if you can see behind Johnny here, we have a foot that we prepared earlier. And heel pain is a condition that we see all the time. So you guys, even in the last few months, you've seen quite a few cases with heel pain. Yeah, yeah very common in the clinic. Yeah, yeah probably a lot of heel pain. the most common sort of condition we get presented with. Yeah, but most of us will see five you know, cases of this each day because it's such a common, common condition. Um, so what is, John, I'll ask you a question. What is the most common cause of heel pain in, in adults? So usually the most common cause is to do with biomechanics a lot yep. of the time. And the most common condition we see is a condition called plantar fasciitis. Yeah. It's, um, it's most people, if they come in, and they'll often say that to us, they'll say, I think I have plantar fasciitis. And nine out of, time, and nine out of ten times, they're right. Now, the tricky thing is not knowing what it is, but how to get it better. So that's where we as podiatrists, we uh, do our best work. You see, working out what's the cause of it, and then working out a treatment to fix it. So, so we've got okay, we've got a few viewers there, which is cool. If you're there and you can see it, just um, just say something. <laughs> something we know that you're there. And if you do have a question, ask us because it'll pop up and we can answer it. Um, but until you do ask a question, <laughs> we'll use our our prepared ones. So one of the questions that we were asked is. When you have foot pain, so let's say this uh, heel pain, when is the right time to use shockwave therapy? So, um, generally, you guys probably agree with this, when you first come in with plantar fasciitis, if it's only a short period of time, it's best to go with those more short-term treatments. So things like taping or um, orthotic therapy can be helpful in some cases as well, if it's, if it's, if it's we know it's from a biomechanical cause, but, um, the most common reason that we use shockwave therapy is for long-term plantar fasciitis. So if it's been around for three months or more, that's when we like to use um, the shockwave therapy. Oh, look guys, we're getting more viewers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, who can and cannot undergo this treatment? So there's no real counterindications for shockwave. There's some people that shouldn't have it if you've got blood clotting disorders, but otherwise it's quite safe for most people. Um, so I might ask you a question, Julia. So the question here is, is it safe to use? Um, so, oh, and, and there's another question here, is it painful? So what would you say if someone said, is it painful to have the shockwave done? Um, it can be a bit uncomfortable. Um, because essentially it's sort of a bit of a to restart that inflammation process because mm. the plantar fascia's sort of got stuck so that's sort of the reasoning behind so it, it can be a bit uncomfortable but we can also adjust the, um, the settings and different people yeah. uh, respond differently yeah. to the treatment if some people will find it very very painful but a lot of people don't yeah exactly yeah. yeah, it's certainly not excruciating. Um, so Hazen is on there. So yeah, pain, pain wise, <laughs> pain wise, it's it's tolerable. Yeah, you know, it's not like having a needle or an injection that's you know really really set, you know quite severely painful. Mm. So the effects, great question. Now, the actual way the shockwave therapy works is there's not a great understanding of how it works, but there's awesome evidence that it does work. So. These, this literature has been around for quite a while now and it's accumulating more and more that this that shockwave therapy is extremely effective for chronic plantar, plantar fasciitis or plantar heel pain. All right. So what conditions can it treat? 
So you mentioned before yeah. some conditions in the heel joint for adults. So what oh, are they? So I've recently used it for Achilles tendonitis. I uh, used it for plantar fasciitis yesterday. Mm. Um, that's probably the main one we'd use it for. Yeah. yeah. And they're all those collagen based tissues. So we're talking about um, tendons and ligaments. Because they're quite avascular, they don't have a great blood supply. Shockwaves are great as just getting getting things happening in that tissue, the angiogenesis, and um, in, you know new brand new blood vessels being formed. So that's a big word. Yeah. Yeah. Angiogenesis. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, it's a bit mysterious how it works. And like most treatments, it was actually discovered accidentally. So they started using extracorporeal shockwave. It initially was used for breaking up kidney stones. So instead of doing the procedures, they put it where the kidney was and break them apart, which was called lithotripsy. But now they've just found, they, they started using it for bone spurs and other things like that. And then they just found that it had a, a great effect on inflamed tendons. So we've been using ours now for about five years and it's great fun. Good results. Yeah. Now we've got another question through from Glenn. Hi. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. So, how long does the treatment last? So, how long is the treatment? So, you say you had heel pain and you're wanting to have this treatment. How much, How long did it take for that on that day to do it? So, if we were to get you into the clinic and have a session of shockwave, we could probably have it done in around ten to fifteen minutes, yes. depending on the setting we use or the location. But usually, it's fairly quickly. Um, yeah, we've got. Four pods, five, well, five pods. Five podiatrists. Five podiatrists yeah. that all um, efficient in using it, so yeah. Yeah. And Julia, if you're going to use shockwave therapy, how many sessions would, would you generally recommend in a row, or a week apart, generally for so shockwave? About four. Mm. But, but for, that's so what I find, yeah, for most people. Yeah, three to four. Three usually to four. Sometimes a couple more, but yeah. that's usually we find by the third and fourth session that inflammatory process and the healing cascade has, has really, really kicked off. Yeah, just checking out our questions as they've come through. So we've mentioned the treatments, who can and can't have it. So, yeah, some people would ask, is it safe for people that are pregnant? Is it safe for people with diabetes and other conditions like that? As long as we've checked you and we know for sure that there's no other issues, it's it's definitely a safe treatment. Um, Brita, we just answered that question. <laughs> Great minds. Yeah, so the only condition that you really shouldn't have it for is if you've got a blood clotting disorder that makes you, that gives you um, like severe bleeding, but even with that, I've had patients, we have been able to use that, so. so. All right, so I reckon we've done pretty good. Um, we've answered the questions that have come up. The one thing I'd probably reiterate is if you have heel pain and you're suffering with it, particularly if you've tried other things or tried to get some help, come and see us because we've seen every different variety of heel pain you can imagine. And Shockwave is only one of the tools in our toolbox. We have many, many other options we can use to fix it, so. Um, and definitely it's been with some patients and they're getting some relief um, with other things like the orthotics and different things and we've um, added on the shockwave and then it's really had a exactly. big impact on the pain so yeah well it's sort of like hitting, in a positive way <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like pushing the fast forward button yeah. for recovery and that's why we why we so, love it yeah. So Hazen, he wants to know how to book an appointment. So you got a few options. First thing is just pick up the phone and call us. You can just um, talk to our front desk staff. Second option would be to jump on our website where you can have a look at more information. But if you're ready to get better, then you can just book online straight away and get in, get in to see us. Um, we've got pretty busy this week. Yeah, but it's from like next week's spaces. Uh, yeah, uh, next week spaces, we've got some yeah. spots. But call us now so you can get in as soon as you can. Okay, Maddie has just asked, uh, how long before you're not in pain? Really does depend oh how long you've had the pain and how severe it is, but most people within three to four weeks, with shockwave, I've found that you guys feel yeah, the same. same. Yeah. That pain is definitely heading really, you know, back in the right direction, so. Yeah. And so for some people often, it can be a bit tender just mm. after, because as I said, it's that restarting. And so often, oh, it's a bit sore the next day, but then there's a big, a dramatic yep. reduction in pain. So that's something to be aware of. As well. Yeah. 
it's no pain, no gain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I reckon that's it. Yeah, I reckon um, we did pretty good. Uh, <laughs> high fives. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Love <laughs> <laughs> to hang in. Thanks for watching. Thank you, guys. Get in touch if you need help. Bye-bye. <laughs>